What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. For today's video we'll be continuing our series on the TinySA and go through some initial setup steps for both the TinySA Ultra and the TinySA Basic. So join me and let's get into it. For today's video we'll be using this TinySA Ultra sent to me by CC and this Tiny SA Basic, also from CC, but I purchased this one myself a while back. So let's go over some of the first steps we need to take before using the Tiny SA. And this will be running a self-test and then calibration. Now the first thing we'll need to do before running the self-test and calibration is connect one of the included coax cables to the Tiny SA. One end goes on the bottom SMA connector and the other end goes to the top SMA connector. And on the basic, these are labeled low and high, and on the ultra, these are labeled RF and cal. So with that on, we can go ahead and run the self-test. And this process is the same on both the basic and the ultra, and is done by tapping on the screen to show the menu, then select config, and then select self-test to begin. This will run through a series of tests and should show pass on each test that it runs. And once that's done, just tap on the screen to continue. Now we're ready to move on to the calibration process and the coax cable connection to both SMA connectors needs to be on for this test as well, so we'll go ahead and leave that on. To begin the calibration, tap on the screen to bring up the menu, then select config, then select level cal. Now this next menu will vary slightly from the basic and ultra. On the basic, we can just tap on the calibrate button to get started. On the ultra, we have two calibration options. One is for 100 kilohertz to 5.34 gigahertz. And the second option is to calibrate above 5.34 gigahertz. This first option is gonna be fine for most people, so we'll go ahead and select that one. Then we can go ahead and select calibrate to begin. Then just give it some time to run the calibration process. And the basic will calibrate fairly quickly, but the ultra takes a bit longer since it has a much wider frequency range compared to the basic. Once we see calibration complete shown on the screen, we can tap on it to continue. So with that, the devices are all calibrated and ready to go. Now there is one extra thing you may want to do if you have the Tiny SA Ultra and that's enable the ultra mode. If we look at the screen here before we enable ultra mode, we can see that the maximum frequency it's scanning is 800 megahertz. That's fine for most, but if we wanted to run tests on something at a higher frequency, like a mesh-tastic device, for example, which usually runs on the ISM band here in the US, which is from 902 to 928 megahertz. If we wanted to test that, we would need to enable the ultra mode to unlock the higher frequencies. Now doing this is simple, so let's go ahead and do that by tapping on the screen, then selecting config, then more, and then we'll have a checkbox for enable ultra, and we can tap on that to select it. Now we'll briefly see a message pop up asking us to go to their website for the unlock code, and then we're presented with a number pad to enter in the code. At the time of this video, the code is 4321, and it's been that way for a while, and I don't expect it to change, but if you're watching this video at a later date and it isn't working, then you'll want to visit the website to get the current code. So let's go and enter in 4321, and then hit enter. Now if we look at the screen, we can see that it's scanning up to 3 gigahertz. Now there are some disadvantages to running such a large scan like we're currently doing from 0 hertz all the way up to 3 gigahertz. Namely, the scan time is much longer, which means it's possible to miss signals that only transmit for a short period of time. Now this isn't a big deal since we're typically not going to run such a wide scan anyway, so in the case of Mesh-tastic, for example, we would only scan from 900 to 930 megahertz or so. 
And speaking of Meshtastic, we'll be going over how I use the TinySA to troubleshoot a range issue in the next video. If you're interested in picking up a TinySA, I'll have affiliate links to both the versions in the video description below. That'll do it for this video on the initial setup of the TinySA, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss out on any future content in this series of videos on the TinySA. Thank you all and have a good one.